once again, I can't help but noticing a similarity to the Carolina dun, 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 dun. Bays. <laughs> Carolina Bays. Now, the question is, are these oval features that are found in this blast area associated, is their origin a function of the blast? Because if so, the fact that there are no macroscopic specimens of the meteorite or the comet piece found, then we can't go from there and then say, well, because we're not finding um, macroscopic pieces of meteorite in the Carolina Bays, that that therefore excludes them possibly being somehow connected with a cosmic event. Now, Brad and I have what we've we hung out in that the, in the uh, round table a year and a half ago, two years right. ago, when we were with Chris Moore. He has his ideas on the origin of the bays. Davies has his ideas on the origin of the bays. Dave, Davies, Davies, and uh, Davies, yeah, I just want to mention he's he's the one that's got so many of those extraordinary. Yeah, uh, lidar images. So that's at cintos.org, and I put that in the in the show notes several times. So I'll add that again. But yeah, those are just amazing to look at. They are amazing, Michael Davius. Yeah, because it's really showing up what these the 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 things that are lying concealed in the landscape, and and which to me is so amazing because it's it's just further proof of what we've kind of been talking about for decades is that yeah, there's a whole a whole landscape, a whole story engraved into the global landscape that's just been hidden from our sight for millennia. And now we are, we're developing through technology and through, um, you know, secondary perceptions through, you know, uh, scanning electron microscopy and energy dispersive spectroscopy and so on. These new technologies, we're beginning to see things that we couldn't see before, both microscopic and macroscopic. And this, the LIDAR stuff that, that Davias, is that how you say his name again? I Davius. Davius, yeah, that he's come up with is, um, is amazing, like you said. And then there, are there, are, oh, go ahead. Are there, are there features like this that aren't in the blast zone in well, Siberia? Well, see, that is the next question. And yeah. so far, I, to my knowledge, no, there's not. Okay. That's, but I don't know. I, I don't want to say definitively no, there's not, because right. I don't know. Um why aren't there why aren't there trees in it? Is it just too wet? I mean, I you probably I don't know if you know, but it's just strange to me why it's so empty. Right. right. Yes. I, I, I mean what, what would be what yeah, it's, yeah, it could be a bog, but trees can grow in swamps. Yeah, and that's uh, in the case strange. of the Carolina Bays, you know, they've got lots of it's because of the the so called bay tree. Actually, yeah, that they're called bays, not yeah. bays right. like inlets on the coastline, but bays after the bay tree that yes. grows pro prolifically in the in the swampy depressions that are yeah. the characteristic that just, bays. That just looks suspiciously barren. It does look sus suspiciously barren. Yeah, and I'm wondering if uh, you know the the soil was sterilized or something. Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, by a heat wave the microbiome or microbiome uh, is dead. But after 80 years, you'd think I know. it would be replenished. Well, the grasses will come back first. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, if anyone That's... has any 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 thoughts on that, you know, share well, them share them with us because you know, this is still a mystery. We you know, it hasn't been resolved yet whether this is a piece of a comet or an asteroid, although I'm leaning more towards a comet and given what we know about comets and the nature of comets from the last few decades, there's not a clear dividing line between comets and asteroids anymore. I mean, there's a whole gradation of, of beasts between the two that are kind of almost hybrids. And that's something else we will look at um, and try to learn more about. But yeah, a lot of devolatized comet nuclei almost appear more asteroid-like than, than they do comets, a typical yeah. icy body. Although yeah. comet nuclei do have a lot of ice. So anyway. I think LIDAR, LIDAR and something like this would be interesting, too, because I would be interested to know if it's actually larger than the vegetation implies. In other words, has it been shrinking since 
Yeah. Like have the have the trees been growing inwards? Encroaching, yeah. yeah. Interesting yeah, question. Just, yeah. Because you know, some of the um features that Brad and I have been investigating in the field, flood caused features, for example, the Hickory Run Boulder Field and the Blue Rocks Boulder Field, which are both um right. also known as singing rocks up in Pennsylvania, are good examples where you can and we'll have pictures of this, you know, in an upcoming episode where people will be able to see some some of these features, but almost certainly produced by a uh, uh, an oversaturated uh, matrix of material moving almost on a horizontal plane, but choked with boulders. And one of the things is, is that you'll, you might see an area that's 100 yards or 200 yards wide of just barren boulders. The trees are growing at the edge. But if you go over to the edge and you go into the trees, you realize that the boulder field is much wider than the barren area between the trees. And just like you were, you said there, Russ, the trees are encroaching. And probably in a few more centuries or another millennia, you'll eventually have this whole uh, barren boulder field completely grown over. And then eventually soil will will fill in the, the interstices between the rocks and you get a layer of soil and 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 you know a thousand years from now, two thousand years from now, you might it might be difficult to know that you're actually walking on this lag deposit of these thousands, tens of thousands of huge boulders that you're are about, forming the upper layer of the landscape. You're talking about ringing rocks park? Is that what you're Referencing there in Pennsylvania? Yeah. Yeah. You, you've been there? No, but I, I've studied it. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we went there. We went to a couple of those. And that was one of the things that I immediately saw was, well, okay, you look at the thing and, and, and it looks this wide, but it actually extends up under the forest for a considerable, like twice the width of what you're actually seeing. Yeah. So, yeah, the forest is in, encroaching upon it. But yeah, I think what Kyle was, the point he was making, we, so we've set enormous fires, you know, when you've got a pile of dead trees and you burn them down, uh -huh. right? you, you burn them, it'll leave a barren area. Uh -huh. That fire is so hot. You know, when you burn a huge pile of dead trees, it can burn so hot that it kills the biome in the soil, sometimes several feet down. Uh -huh. And it'll leave a, it'll, so then all the grasses start growing back up and there's this giant circle that won't grow anything sometimes for years. Um, so yeah, there's places we've, we cleared and burned. And I mean, back in, I don't know, 10 years ago now, and you can go there and still see the rings, still see the circles where, it, I mean, they grow certain things start coming up in those rings, really? but it's, it's different vegetation at yeah. first than what the normal, you know, predominant vegetation is in the area. Yeah. So if it, you know, if a normal, like a, a, a pile of trees fire that people can set on the ground can do that for years, I imagine if there are certain areas in that where, where incredible heat actually impacted the ground itself. Right. And actually flash, fr flash fried all of the microbiome that lives in the soil down to the bedrock. That may take a long time for the, for the vegetation to, to reclaim it because the soil itself is just dead and sterile. There's no. Uh huh. So, well, just yeah. an idea. So yeah. may maybe that's what we're looking at here. Modern science is rediscovering what our ancient ancestors knew. Periodically, planet Earth is overcome by sweeping catastrophic events that completely remodel the landscape of the world, reset the global ecological clock, and disrupt humankind's efforts to build a sustainable civilization. The forces of nature that trigger such events are still operational and will remain so despite our refusal to acknowledge them. But whether we accept it or not, we are inextricably a part of a cosmic ecosystem. And our fate is tied to phenomena which, for the time being, is beyond our ability to successfully respond. This can change, but only with a major change in our priorities as a civilization. The process begins with education. Please join us and participate remotely as the Cosmic Summit will be live streamed to the world via HowTube.com.